Thank you for watching. My name is Matt Bizek and I'm with Upward Bound at Clatsop Community College. And today I'm going to be telling you about what you need to know before starting your FAFSA. All right, so really it's more a matter of what you need to have with you when you are starting to fill out your FAFSA. So for the student, because um, there's both student and parent information you're going to need. For the student, you're going to need your social security number. Um, if you worked in the previous year, you'll need any tax information. Um, so the, the FAFSA opens on October 1st. You usually file your FAFSA starting in January of the next year. Uh, the tax information that the FAFSA cares about is for the tax forms you filled out from the year prior, right? So if right now we're in 2017. Uh, when you're filling out the FAFSA in 2017, they want tax information for 2016, uh, both for the student and parents. So students will need prior year tax information if you did work. Um, additionally, you're going to need to have your FSA ID login information. Uh, hopefully you'll have done this before you begin doing your FAFSA. It makes things a bit faster and easier and streamlined when you're filling out the forms. Uh, you also want to have some list of potential schools. When you're completing your FAFSA, it's going to let you list up to 10 schools that you can actually send your FAFSA report off to. Uh, if you have that information before you start, it, it's just convenient because you don't have to do kind of a search in the middle of your FAFSA of, oh yeah, who am I actually sending this to? Uh, the reason you're doing FAFSA in general is to send each of those schools a report that kind of highlights your financial information. Um, and then they look at the report and determine if you need any aid or if you qualify for any aid. So if you don't have any schools to list on there, you're doing the FAFSA, but you're not actually sending it anywhere. It's not actually going to benefit you until you list schools on there. It only is going to let you list up to 10. So if you have more than 10 schools, um, which does happen. Uh, you, there's ways to, to list more than that, but check with an advisor at school counselor if you have questions on that. Uh, one last thing is for the student is to know your dependency status. Most students, you still live with your parents. Um, it, it is pretty straightforward, but for those of you who maybe have an emancipation or have um, just unique living circumstances, that's one area where there can be some confusion. So again, check with counselors, check with advisors to just get more information about what you need to do for your specific circumstances. When it comes to the parents, they will also need social security numbers, uh, tax information for the prior year, and to have completed that FSA ID. Uh, for the most part, that is it for the parents, but you need to do both of those to actually complete the FAFSA. You cannot just do the student portion and finish it. The parents will need to be involved and if you didn't file your taxes as the parents from the year prior, that is going to make for some complications because you can put financial information onto the FAFSA, but they kind of check it against the taxes that you have filed the year before. So that, that's really just the, the short list of the things that you need to do or have with you before you start filling out the FAFSA. Uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in for the short little Reminder, uh, I know I have videos out there too for completing the FSA ID and FAFSA if you're looking for more detailed step-by-step -step guides on each of those processes. Uh, go ahead and check those out.